All righty. Well, welcome, guys, to Solutions University. Um, just some four of these amazing humans here, uh, and we are here to discuss everything solution oriented. Um, we're currently in a state of division in our country. Um, we see a lot of back and forth arguing going on, but not a lot of solutions moving forward. Um, so Topher, Sean and Greg are here to help me, Kate, with creating this dialogue, um, creating this conversation that needs to occur of how we come together as a nation to love one another as human beings um, from a view a demographic, a view from different demographics um, and different perspectives as to how we can all benefit and um, do our part to bring that sense of change to today's nation. So starting out, we are gonna kind of talk a little bit about ourselves so you guys can get to know us a little bit better um, and who is speaking on these, these, uh, these very big controversial problems happening in today's nation. Um, so I guess we will just jump right into that. Um, I don't know who wants to start, Sean, I'm just gonna throw you under the bus there. So. Hey, let's go, Sean, Sean's up. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, hey, everybody. My name is Sean. Um, <clears throat> so I'm originally from the west side of Chicago, born and raised, grew up there. I lived there my entire childhood and adult life. Um, so I enlisted in the U.S. Army at 27 years old, and uh, that was my first experience leaving. Uh, my parents, I have both my parents, grew up with both my parents. Uh, they're both very liberal Democrats, like everybody else in the city of Chicago. Um, I was too for most of my life. Um, <clears throat> my upbringing was kind of split 50-50. You know? I happened to be a pretty decent football player growing up, so I got to attend private schools for part of uh, my education. And then when I couldn't play anymore, I lost my scholarship and I was able to see what the public school education system has to offer, which is not a whole lot. Um, uh, the neighborhoods that I grew up in were, uh, one of them is Humble Park, which is a Puerto Rican neighborhood. Uh, if you're not Puerto Rican, you don't go there. Um, I live about two blocks from where the Latin Kings were born in this country. Uh, so there was a, a lot of gang activity, a lot of drugs. Um, and then right on the other side of the park, there was the uh, Maniac Latin Disciples. And on the other side of the park was uh, Vice Lords and Four Corner Hustlers. So there was a lot of racial tension and a lot of gang violence growing up. I probably got shot at more growing up than I have in the army. And I've got four tours overseas. So if that speaks to the magnitude of that, uh, kind of puts you in a good understanding. Uh, but that was all normal to me growing up. Um, I just thought that how things were. Um, I didn't really see what was wrong with where I grew up and where I lived until I joined the military and I got to travel around this, this nation and live in other places and see what other cities are like and other people are like. And uh, that's what opened my eyes and made me go, wow. So I really messed up where I came from and I'm really lucky that I'm in the situation I'm in uh, today. Um, I'm currently uh, divorced as many military people are, but I'm a father active in my kid's life. I make it to their gymnastics, to their cheerleading. I coach the little league um, <clears throat> because I grew up with a father and having a father, uh, my dad was my biggest role model and taught me that hard work will get you anything and everything. You just got to always pick yourself up because life will knock you down. Um, <clears throat> after the military, uh, I was medically retired. Um, had to figure out what it, what is it I'm going to do with my life. I had no idea. I didn't have a plan. I still had uh, nine more years left in the military, so I thought. And then they were like, you got six months and you're out. So I looked around at what could I do with my physical limitations and, and my disability and what would I be interested in at the same time? So I got into IT field, uh, developing uh, applications and software and struggled with transitioning out and getting a job at first because I had some certifications but didn't have a degree. Um, and thanks to some good friends, and battle buddies that kept pushing me and telling me that I didn't put all that work in for nothing. I stuck with it and I currently work as a senior software analyst for the school district in my area in Georgia. And, uh, that about sums it up. Awesome. Awesome. That's what's up. Down the line, we'll go to Topher next. What's up, Topher? Um, mine's going to be not as uh, awesome as that story. Uh, so <laughs> I, I feel like mine's the typical story of a Black person growing up in the South versus the North with Sean over here. 
So um, where, where can I start? I grew up in a single parent household. I was born out of where like my, my father was a married man and um, not to my mother. <laughs> and he had four other baby mamas besides my mom. So he was the uh, epitome of a rolling stone. So he never was, he was in and out of my life. I maybe saw him around my birthday and probably around the holiday. So that was, that was pretty much all I saw of my dad, even though he stayed right around the corner. Now, uh, I, I grew up in a house that was, you know, uh, full of domestic violence. I saw my, my mama boyfriend slap a two by four across her chin. She got some blood. I've seen, you know, uh, alcoholism. My mom just stumbling drunk and, depression and all those things, poverty. And um, I used to always tell myself, or at least question, because, you know, I'm a Christian. I used to always question God, like, out of all the places in the world, out of all the families in the world, why, why did you put me in a situation like this? Um, and I used to ask myself that all the time. And I don't think I really understood that until I became an adult. See, I could have been, given my personality, I am very, uh, uh, I'm uh, impressionable in, in, a, in a little sense, right? So if I would have grew up in the neighborhood like my cousins in Chicago, I probably could have been one of, one, one of the youngsters running around in the game. You know, who knows? But uh, I grew up in the country, so I didn't have the ability to do that. <laughs> it's just, all I had was dogs and, you know, and, and animals and plants. So I had gardens that I, I stuck to a lot of times. My grandma and grandpa had a garden that we, we tilled it all the time. Uh, so I know all about that life, the farm life, the, the, the animal life, all that. I went to a school, very small, graduation class of 22. And when I tell people, they're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> graduation class of 22, and we were considered a big class. I think the, the class previous uh, before us was like 12 or something like that. So um, very small resources. I did play sports. I played every sport until 10th grade because I had to work. And when I worked, uh, my mom pretty much gave me an ultimatum. She says, you got to pick one sport, and that's it. So I picked football. I had to give up basketball, which, you know, I love both sports. But I was one of those people, um, you know, if, I, if I'm giving a cross, I'm going to carry it. So I just I just did what I had to do because I, I saw my mom doing all she could, and it was only right for, right for me to do all I could. So I worked in several jobs. I've had jobs from – Watermelon patches to filling the with the five gallon of spring water jugs and deliver them all the way to McDonald's working as a bag boy in the grocery store. All that before I finally joined the military. Uh, I was going to Mississippi State for about a year and a half. First, I went the first semester, dropped out. Say, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to work two jobs and, and, and do this music thing. I'm a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make it big. Nope, didn't happen. Went back to school, and I'm glad I did because uh, it kind of put me on a, a new trajectory, which also led me into the military. Um, and I didn't join the military. I'm going to be real. I didn't join the military because of some patriotism. I joined the military because I had just paid a $400 extraction for my tooth, and I had zero med you know, medical benefits and everything. So I was like, let me go, let me go give me a job. You know, Let me go give me something with some benefits. So I joined, and I'm glad I did. Some of my closest friends and family are still in the military or prime military. A lot of the discipline and professionalism I do have now came from that area. And it gave me a chance for a person who you know, grew up in poverty. I didn't travel that much at all. I've got a chance to travel, see the world. And given the fact that I grew up in Mississippi, which is what, 42% um, black population. Um, and given the racial tension here, I really didn't chance to hang around white people that much. So the military took me out of my comfort zone, allowed me to experience and explore the world, which I love because inherently I, I, I don't hate people. It's just that I never got the opportunity to do so until um, uh, that presented itself. So got out to the military, was kind of like, I was Hebrew language, which is cool. I guess I know a second language, but it was nice. kind of how the training, how they done things was redundant. And I just, I couldn't keep up with it. You know, I have ADHD and I got us doing this repetitive stuff. Just ain't going to work. I got out the military, didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I was going to make it. And eventually I ended up landing my, my, one of my dream jobs where I work now, which is with a record label. And I do digital marketing for them. And so I get to work around music, around video edit, all that stuff that I love to do. So it's pretty awesome right now. Um, but then I got to TikTok. 
known as the TikTok star now for you know it is what it is. <laughs> I didn't give myself that moniker. It's just it's a it's something they've given me, and I, I'm just going to accept it. I'm going to embrace it, and I think I offer. I want, I want to give a big shout out to TikTok because the ability to green screen makes telling stories and news and everything so much easier, especially for somebody that's as logical as me and straightforward. Like it's easy to put up the rule, the law, or just the whole story right there and go word by word so people can follow along. So I, I do appreciate that aspect of TikTok. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. While well, I'm married, don't forget my, my my personal life. I am married. I have two wonderful daughters. One is five. The other one's a big fat ten month year old who we already <laughs> already planning her birthday, uh, first year birthday, and is already in you know the upper hundreds already. I'm just like, man, girl, you just <laughs> man, you know. And one thing I always wanted to, wanted to do was be in my my kid's life. You know, I I didn't want to. Put my kids through the same thing I had to experience growing up you know thank god my mom was just strict and she knew a lot of different things she was superwoman so you know she was able to teach me things that have come in handy and I always tell people you know she might not have showed me how to be a man and she might not have showed me what I need to do but she definitely showed me what I should not do right um and so that's that's what helped you know I guess help shape the future I have now but yeah, that's what I got going on, man. I'm, I got a little lengthy, but we're, I'm passing on over to Greg, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I I, I was born in, in, into a billionaire family. I was given everything. Uh, I, I, I was always uh, had to walk to the front of the line. I never had any problems in my life ever. And uh, I got cartoon birds and things flying around me because I'm so privileged. No, that's not at all my life. I was... Uh, uh, born a military brat, and um, my dad is one of the few soldiers that uh, uh, served in World War II, the Korean War, and did two tours in Vietnam before he retired. And uh, he was definitely a man's man. If you took the the, the uh, character Archie Bunker and John Wayne, and you rolled them up into one guy, that was my dad. He's <laughs> six foot two. He was 240 pounds. He was just a man's man. He really was. And uh, But he and my mom divorced when I was in fifth grade. I got a twin brother and two older brothers. And uh, uh, so my mom was forced to, to, to raise the four boys on her own because my dad then left. And um, my mom was my dad's eighth wife. He was married many times, and so he was used to, all right, here, here, here's your alimony, and I'm gone, you know. So from fifth grade on, and I stuttered like Corky Pig when I was a little kid, so, so I, uh, um, I did a lot of fighting because a lot of kids just wanted to hear me stutter, and, and so I grew up fighting from a young age. I started uh, um, uh, getting in trouble at school a lot. My mom would come and get me from school and bring me home. I'd get in trouble at home. My mom didn't have a lot of money. She worked cashiers at a gas station. Uh, my oldest brother had his own little rock and roll band, sex, drugs, rock and roll, started from a young age, kind of took over our living room, made that his practice room. My mom started dragging me and my twin brothers into uh, me and my twin brother in, in, into bars with her as she started to date again. This is back in the seventies. And, and, um, uh, so I kind of grew up in the bars and, and, um, dancing on the floor. So I danced from a young age, little kids over in the corner at bars and stuff. And my mom would, uh, bless her heart. You know, she, she, she was looking for love and she just kind of went through boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend. And, and, um, uh, then she met this guy and, promised her the world and we moved to Iowa of all places and a small town there and and uh we were probably there oh three weeks when I said no more so I called my dad I said dad come and get me and uh so he came and got me and we moved to Pascagoula Mississippi right on the gulf coast and uh um again I still stuttered I still did a lot of fighting dad got sick of me losing my fights and he took me to a boxing club down in in uh uh downtown of moss point mississippi is a neighboring town and uh, he says just go in there and uh ask for coach johnson i said all right so so I, I go in there and i'm the only white kid in the whole place 
there's Latinos in there, there's blacks in there. I'm scared shit, or, or excuse me, I'm scared to death. And um, long story short, man, I I, I uh, made some friends there and um, uh, moved back to Iowa because I missed my twin brother. Um, uh, again, I was back just like a month or so, and I woke up to a lot of screaming and yelling. And I looked at my twin brother's bed, and he's not in it. And I get up, and I go to the kitchen, and there's my mom's face. It's just completely full of blood, and where this dude just smashed a coffee cup of across her face and was telling her to get out he forgot that i i was back and he said you two you little son of a gun get the heck out you know and and long story short there he ended up passed out on on the floor blood bloody himself we packed up everything and my mom and me and my twin brother moved to a, a trailer park in lamoni iowa that's where i graduated high school and uh me and Topher was just talk, talking about this. My dream was to be an NFL football player. Of course, I only grew to be five foot eight and and next to nothing and pounded. So I joined the United States Army. I wanted to be a a, a uh, Green Beret. I never became a Green Beret, but I became a paratrooper and a ranger during my course in in service. This country means everything to me. And my father, the most positive that I ever got out of my life was my father teaching me to be a man. My father taught me a man's word is everything. You lose your word. You don't have anything else. Uh, your, your name's mud after that. And he walked tall. He was a tough man. And, and he was definitely my role model. So I tried to be the best that I could be my, my entire time in the military, a little over 12 years. And then, and then I got out and uh, went to college. I, got, I finished my degree. I got a degree in sociology was a family counselor for a little bit, but um, you, even though it paid good, I really didn't like it. It's like that commercial with, 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 with the gunny sergeant, you know, that says you, he throws the thing at, at, at the patient. I just get so fed, fed up at the, the sissiness, I guess, of, uh, of, of what some people go through and they get upset or whatever. But anyway, so I quit that. I took a $10,000 pay cut and I became a police officer. And I was a police officer for a little over five years, and, and, and I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, but towards the end of that is when the, the Tea Party movement ha happened, and, and I got super involved in that. I created We the Pe People Tea Party of Southern Iowa. Then me and an older lady, we, we uh, co-founded the Iowa Grassroots Coalition. And from that, a guy from Texas, Mike George, who's, who, who, uh, 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 was the founder and CEO of, of uh, Lean Six Sigma and the, the George Group. He was wanting to start something called Strong America Now. And uh, a, a mutual friend of ours, Katrina Pearson, was, was there and she, she knew me and she told him that <clears throat> before you hire anybody, go and talk to this Greg Cummings in Iowa. He's doing some good things with, with the Tea Party movement. So, so he came up and he hired me and I worked with him for about two and a half years. Uh, and, and we talked to all the presidential candidates. We came up with solutions to pay off this net, this nation's deficit in five years time so that we can only concentrate on the debt. Of course, everybody ignored us, uh, all the presidential candidates. And, and, and then the last two that was standing was Romney and Obama. We all know the outcome of that. Uh, so then he wanted me to move to DC and I said, no, I ain't moving to DC. And so I took a severance and then the Tea Party Patriots, the National Tea Party Patriots came knocking and they, 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 they wanted me to go to work for them. So I worked for them almost 10 years. The last 10 years I've been working with the National Tea Party Patriots and, and, uh, uh, and then they restructured and wanted me to move to Atlanta, Georgia. And I said, no, I ain't moving to Atlanta, Georgia. So, so now I, uh, uh, you know, I got my house paid for. I live in small town, Iowa, and uh, I love the slow pace of life. And, and um, uh, so I became a trucker. So that's what I do now. As, as a matter of fact, this is my studio is in the back of my truck. So there you oh, go. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, you were right now. <laughs> just, just real quick, I want to interject. Uh, I just got off a live with Michael Johns, the co-founder of the Tea Party. With who? Michael Johns. I think it's his name. I don't know a Michael Johns. I think it's his name. Yeah, Jen, uh, Jen, Jenny Beth Martin and, and Mark Meckler are, are the co-founders of the Tea Party Patriots. Oh, okay, Patriots, okay. I don't yeah. know, if, is there a difference between Tea Party Patriots and the Tea Party? 
Well, no, the Tea Party as a whole is we the people of the country. So mm -hmm. there's different there's different uh, people that 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 or different groups with, within that 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 might be a county or a state Tea Party oh, group okay. or something like that. But 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 we but but we're all considered the Tea Party, the Tea gotcha. Party movement. Yeah. Yeah, he's a. Uh, oh, I'm trying to see. Oh, National Tea Party Movement co-founder and leader. That, that's that's what it, that's what his profile says. Of them yes, and all the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, you got the three percenters. You you got you know there there there's the Minutemen. There's 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 all these groups, but it's the same type of thing. There there's even the the Border Sheriffs Coalition down down on the southern border. It's the same type of thing. It's just we the people. There's no actual one leader. It's, yeah. There's founders, but there's no leaders. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. And um, and and we 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 just do everything we can to defend this constitution and ed educate as many people as we can and get them active, you know. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I totally didn't talk as long as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to round up this lovely introduction spiel. Um, so my name is Kate Stinson. Um, I'm born in the lovely state of Texas. It's the best state. <laughs> world um but uh, i lived here until i was about five um and then we moved to maryland uh for about two years let me backtrack a little bit i was adopted at birth um my birth mother had me very very young um i was adopted into a caucasian home um my brother is four years older than me he was adopted four years before me he is also african-american um i have a sister who was adopted six years before me um and she is this amazing mexican woman um, and I have nieces and nephews of all different races and colors. Um, so my whole family is just a giant melting pot. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was five, which was the reason that we left Texas. Um, went up to Maryland, lived in Maryland for about two years. Um, mom remarried and we went down to Florida for about 10 years. Um, within those 10 years, you know, Kate had a you know, made some life choices that maybe weren't the greatest um, that resulted in me being in a lot of different areas, um, got in with the wrong crowd of people. Um, all up through my freshman year of high school, I was actually in Catholic private school. Um, anyone that knows about the uh, Catholic private school system um, creates a lot of rebellious souls, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so entering uh, my freshman year of high school, I actually went to, I did go to a, a Catholic high school my freshman year. That only lasted a year. Uh, my sophomore year, uh, I did enter the public school system, um, which was an eye opener for me. Um, experienced a lot and uh, got involved in a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have. Um, my mom got real worried about where I was headed, never got, you know, deeply into drugs or anything of that nature, just was hanging around with those types of people. And as a precautionary thing, um, my mom did send me to treatment. Um, I spent about six months in treatment um, and it wasn't, it was never a matter of whether I was going to use, but it was extremely eye-opening to the realities of, you know, I had roommates who first time getting shot up with, you know, heroin or whatever was from her father who was a drug addict. You know, it made me realize very quickly, like, these are the real harsh realities of the world. Um, and these are the type of people that I want to be around and that I want to help. Um, and so when I left treatment, uh, I decided, you know, I wasn't going to go back to Florida, um, did not want to return to the same toxicity that I had been around. Um, I didn't personally feel like it was smart for me to be around. Um, so I decided to go to boarding school. Um, this particular boarding school that I went to was not your typical, you know, people think boarding school and they think bougie and fabulous and amazing. Um, and it was a great school, but it was specifically for people leaving treatment. Um, it was a very different curriculum. Uh, we had things called out to work. We had ethics that we had to stand by. So you couldn't have your phone. You couldn't lie. You couldn't steal, which obviously you shouldn't do anyway. But if you were caught, um, you went out to work. You were either snow. This was in Maine. This school was in Maine. So you were either shoveling snow in about eight to 10 feet of snow um, instead of going to class that day, or you were cleaning the cafeteria, or you were doing something that was not fun by any means. Um, very similar to how Topher was talking about his graduating class is very small. I had a graduating class of 12. There were 45 females and 100 males that went to my school. Um, wow. It was very easy to, uh, to keep eyes on everyone and what they were doing. Um, when I left there, went to college, went to High Point University. Um, I double majored in business and uh, graphic design with a minor in nonprofit 
nonprofit management. Um, I loved my school, had some great experiences. Again, learned a lot about diversity. Um, they were recruited very much from up north. So this school is in North Carolina. So we had a lot of clash in culture, um, that's for sure. And you do see a very distinct difference between um, not even in a racial <clears throat> thing, but just north to south, how things operate. There was a lot of tension just there from people coming from different regions. Um, and that's kind of where my, my true spark for wanting to immerse in this escapade and journey of racial unity and as you know Greg was talking about we the people I wasn't part of that organization but the sense of coming together as a nation um, began really really sparked for me in college um, when I grew up I didn't really we didn't talk about color that wasn't something that we really discussed um, there were so many different races in my family that it was never something that needed to be talked about. It was more, you're a person, you wanna do this, cool. You're gonna to have to work hard to get there, but that's what you're gonna do. Um, I was never told you're gonna to be treated differently. I was never told this is how, you know, you need to look out for this, you need to be concerned about that. It was, all right, this is life, life's hard, suck it up, deal with it and, and work hard and you'll attain what you wanna attain. Um, my dad is a diehard Texan, he has a very, strong love for work ethic. My, um, he was also in the military. He was in the army. Um, he taught people to fly commercially uh, once he retired, which is how him and my mom met. Uh, my mom was a Southwest, for, or Southwest pilot um, that turned into, she's a captain for the past 10 years. She's flown for them for almost three decades. Um, she's retired now, uh, but I grew up very cultured and I was able to see a lot of different um, places and ways of life and backgrounds. And so a lot of that also contributed to not being raised to talk about color because we, we I got to go overseas. I, I got to see a lot that a lot of people don't get to see in their lifetime. Um, I got to see what underprivileged looks like. I get to see, you know, different religions, different ways that, you know, people have etiquette when they eat, different ways that they go about their day. Um, so I grew up with this very acute awareness of, I am so lucky. Um, and uh, being able to utilize that knowledge and share that knowledge with other people to help them also see, we do have struggles. There are people that have it much, much, much worse than we do. And, and based off of that, if they can overcome and if they can be strong, if they can come together, why can't we? Um, and I think that that, having that background, going to college, experience what I experienced in college, and then leaving and entering this lovely, crazy world of ours, um, I wanted to do something more than just think the things that I was thinking. Um, I wanted to be able to share that with people. And that's when I started uh, my clothing brand, Back With Theory. Um, Back With Theory turned into Southern Oreo. Southern Oreo is where we are now. Um, <laughs> I started my own uh, marketing and graphic design company um, my sophomore year of college. And that is what I do full time right now. Um, so if anybody needs a website or anything of that nature. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I, I've always been a really creative person. I grew up in the theater, grew up doing arts. Um, dance has always been a huge part of my life. Our physical drawing, painting, anything of that nature has been really a huge part of my life. Um, I just turned digital once I entered into college and got into the business aspect of things. Um, I'm kind of going around in circles because I have the brain of a squirrel, uh, but you know, <laughs> here we are. So I met these amazing people through TikTok. Um, TikTok I started once I moved back to Texas about seven months ago. Um, and I love it. So happy to be back. Wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Um, I adore my home state of Texas and uh, it was a hard move. Um, and I was like, you know what? TikTok thing's kind of cool. I need something to pass the time. Gonna hop on it, see what happens. Didn't expect to go anywhere. Um, and fortunately, I've been able to meet some amazing like-minded people um, that are able to collaborate on amazing projects like this, um, where we can come together and kind of put our heads together and, and have these awesome conversations. Um, and also use it as a platform to get my message out there. And as Topher said, you know, the wonderful thing of the green screen of being able to say, hey, this is an issue, let's talk about it. Or this is what's going on, let's talk about it. Um, and being able to connect with people all over the country that you wouldn't initially ever have the chance to meet. Um, so that is kind of my gist of <laughs> we're able to keep up with that whole. No, it's perfect. All over the perfect. Plate, yeah. Break down. Do, uh, do, do, do you mind if I talk a little bit about the series as a whole? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So I, I think um, for the viewers out there, I, now that you got a chance to, to meet 
each one of us, you can see that we're all very, very, very different in, in, in the way we look. Uh, we have a lot of similarities in the way we were uh, uh, brought up, but there's a lot of di differences that each one of us will will uh, share as time goes on. So th that's what this episode right here is all about, is just, just to get to know us and who we are. But in, in, in the following weeks, we're, we're, we're really going to be tackling some really tough issues, and we're going to go in, in, into them and discuss these not as a debate, but from the perspectives of each one of us, and we we are going into it understanding that we are going to be creating solutions. Everybody talks about solutions, but nobody actually comes up with solutions, especially our nation's politi uh, our, po our politicians. So that's what we want you, the viewer, to be able to walk away with is at the end of each one of our episodes, and each one of us are gonna be hosting a different topic that's, that, that we're each re really passionate about. But by the end of that episode, we're gonna have a list of solutions for that issue that's gonna be made available to you on, e on each one of our websites or, or um, uh, YouTubes or, or whatever. But we'll have all that information for you all late, later. But I really wanted to, to touch base so that you guys understand what to look forward to in the weeks to come. Awesome. Yeah, that's hopefully uh, y'all are ready to learn. Um, once again, this is the Solutions University. And um, I'm like Greg, you know, but people always want to debate me. I'm like, why? You know, debate to me is just, you know, it's, to me, it's, it's the one night stand. You know, it's just it, nothing's gonna come from a quick satisfaction. You feel good, pu you know, pump your chest, but that's it. But conversation to me is that romance, is that 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 long relationship you're looking for, and that's when you really get to know someone and and real uh, improvement happens. So that's why I love having conversations with people. I've had plenty of conversations recently, recently because of what's going on. So. Um, this is just going to be one and, and a few to add to what I'm already doing and to have, uh, you know, Greg, you know, his background with Kay and, and Sean's background. I mean, I don't, you know, you got Republican ran poverty, Democratic ran in Chicago, <laughs> you got Kay, Kay who's down there in Texas, you know, just all of that going on. And it's going to be great for everyone to hear. And I, I pray that you uh, pay attention and, and probably invite your friends, share with your friends. Uh, this is just an extended version of, of where you see our faces, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, you know, whatever. But this is just an extended conversation where it's just a group of awesome individuals that are just very patriotic about this country and really cares about the current climate. And they really want to bridge the gap. Um, and there's so much divisive language. I know people want to pin on the president, but I really believe it's everyone else at this point because I'm just looking at people like, why is me talking about this so divisive? You know, so. We're going to dive into a lot of those topics, and I think some of the ones we're going to be, I know at least what I'm going to be talking about is, uh, what was it, um, man? White privilege. Was it white privilege? Yeah. So I'm going, be, I'm going to be tackling that. So I know it's a big topic and everyone wants to talk about it, so let's really dive into it and see what it is. And, you know, um, we got some other topics, white privilege. Uh, what else we got, Greg? We got, got police it. brutality that, that will be hosted by Kate, white privilege, which will be hosted by Topher. Then we got injustice within, which is really, really clever. And Sean came up with that. And of course, he's definitely going, going to be uh, hosting that. And, and, and then I'll bring, I'll, I'll bring up the caboose with uh, the last uh, episode with de dealing with We the People. Yeah. So there you go. Four topics. Uh, and we're going to probably be about 40 to 45 minutes long. So, you know, bring your coffee, bring your tea, whatever you got to do. Uh, if, you, if you're driving on the road like like Greg, <laughs> this is easy stuff that you can listen to. <laughs> Not sure if we put this on podcast, but hey, turn on YouTube. It's just like a podcast as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be great. And I look forward to it. I don't know. Um, I, I will say that, you know, Kate does some amazing things. And I'm surprised she didn't mention Blexit. You know, it's not like oh. she's not like a, a founder of a, a branch or anything, you know, just, I don't know, <laughs> just, just something, you know, it'd be nice if, you know, someone would bring it up, but, <laughs> but that's, that's awesome. Do you want to talk about that or are you just going to leave that in the background too? 
No, I, I'll, I'll talk in a little bit. So I'm no longer actually the Texas State Director anymore. Mm. Um, but I, I was for a brief period of time, and it is an amazing organization, guys. Um, if you guys are not familiar with Blexit, uh, Candace Owens did start a Black exit movement um, for Black conservatives um, who are free thinkers. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to support Trump or anything of that nature. It's simply, we are here, we have these views, and we are tired of being shamed for having these views. Here is a place that we can all come together and discuss them. Um, and just have that safe dialogue space. Um, and it's awesome. And it, it's a movement that is now they've got Lexit, they've got um, Jews for Trump, they've got all sorts of different things that have branched off from this amazing movement that she has created. Um, she co-founded it with Brandon Tatum. So if you guys are looking to get involved with something like Lexit, um, there are different state chapters. Not every state has one yet, but they're working on that for sure. You can find them on Facebook, Instagram, pretty much every platform you can think of. Um, but they're incredible. And I loved, I loved working with them when I was with them. I'm still working with them on a smaller scale, more on a media scale now. Um, but uh, if, if anyone wants to be a state director, they definitely have states that need them. Um, and uh, it, it's a lot of work and it's a big time commitment, but it is so rewarding. Um, and it's just, it's an amazing, it's an amazing organization. I <laughs> so I, I want to say something about that. Um, so you guys know, I, I, I actually got a TikTok account uh, just because my daughter kept sending me funny videos. And as I was going through the For You page and things, I started seeing a lot of, a lot of stuff that I just, it didn't sit right. I thought it was silly and nonsense coming out of certain people's mouth. And uh, <clears throat> I never made a single video or a response or wrote a comment or anything um, until I had saw Kate and Christopher. When I saw you guys out there and I saw the the hateful comments for your views that you guys would get, but like, you just let it roll out like water off of the duck's back. Um, I was like, you know, it's nice to see other people you know, color that will voice their opinion and stand by it. And I was like, you know, hey man, I, I, I went in the army, I faced nasty drill sergeants, bad NCOs, bad chain of command, and some, you know, Taliban's. I could face some comments. And uh, these two down here specifically gave me the courage to make my first couple videos. And 80,000 followers later, nothing like their following, but you know. Oh my gosh, hush. Uh, <laughs> You know, the, hey. the, I, and I have a lot of support from other Latinos and Blacks that come in my comment section all the time backing me up. And it wasn't always that way, but I see the movement growing and it's because of the people like these two right here. Appreciate that, man. It's, it's always when people tell me, you're the reason why I started, like, bro, I just started myself. Like, how am I the <laughs> reason? Exactly. It's like, I'm still learning. So please. I've been on TikTok for like two months. Leave me alone. Yeah. But hey, Sean, I got to blow your horn a little bit man because uh just just three weeks ago three weeks ago i think you had what 21 22 20, 20. wow man and over a weekend you dang near doubled your following because and i noticed you went from talking about issues that was very important to you to confronting those that that were confronting you it, it was a switch that was just phenomenal you took it the bull by the horns and just over a friggin' weekend you dang near doubled the amount of followers you got and you're still climbing so a big salute to that man that was out Thanks. definitely inspiring yeah man um so yeah don't 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 um uh, doubt yourself man i know you you're gonna be the next big face i mean it is what it is man and i'm glad that you made the decision and that's what i'm hoping to tell people like i said you don't you don't understand how many comments i get today simply saying or messages Man, you're inspiring because you stand up for what you believe. Like, it's exactly almost like right. it's a, it's a form. It, my thing is, we're taught this as kids. What happens when we become adults? We're taught as kids to stand for what you believe. If you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Then we all grow up and realize that's that's kind of, <laughs> it's not how the real world works all the time. You know, especially when you got the job and everything else tied up into it. But uh, um, I, that's that's about about time. You know, um, and we can get ready. Like I said, uh. I'm ready for the next discussion. Um, any any last words, anybody? Kate, Greg, I'm just super that. Uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, I'm super excited to see where this goes, and uh, 
Well, like Topher and, and Sean have all said, and Greg, you know, I hope you guys do come back, tune in, see what this is about, share it with your friends, be a part of the conversation. Um, when we figure out all the logistics and everything, um, send in emails. I'm sure we can set up an email for you guys to reach out if there's topics that you guys want us to talk about. That helps out, us out a ton. Um, we, we want this to be a dialogue starter to involve you guys. We don't want to just talk at you. We want to talk with you. So making sure that you're getting invested in and reaching out to us and, and saying your piece, we, we're all here for it. Outstanding. And I just want to let the viewers know to just, just be on the lookout. Uh, we, we, we all have some followers. I, I, I think we're all going to put out some TikToks, like some commercials of what the next upcoming issues about the time and, and so on and so forth to tune into it. So um, just be on the lookout for that within IG, TikTok, Facebook, whatever. In order to see that, make sure you're following each one of us. So all the information is going to be in the description. Um, to our TikToks, to our uh, Instagrams, or to our websites, because, you know, we all are super professional, and we got websites out <laughs> here, so uh, you, you can follow us on our websites, and there's some places to support, so feel free to, like I said, just just become a part of the movement, and, like, this, this is something that we don't want to just uh, keep to ourselves, this is something that we want to share with everyone, so, like Kate said, we probably won't open up to where you can send emails, and, and everything, because we really want to get to some solutions that that's going to be effective, not just one side, it's just Republican or Democrat or whatever. It's, it's just really people on both sides can come together and agree on something. And most times, more, actually, when I actually sit down and have a conversation with a progressive or liberal, and we actually have a real conversation, we agree on a lot. <laughs> it's, it's funny, like, at, at just, you know, at hindsight, at face value, we, we just, you know, poll opposites. But the moment we sit down and have a conversation, they're like, oh, I guess conservatives ain't as evil as I thought they were, you know. Um, I guess they do care about, you know, LGBTQ and, and the minorities and the poverty, you know, you know poor all and all that, you know. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to. But, uh, um, yeah, so we're, we're going to sign off. And like you said, we're going to um, see everybody. We're, we're going to promote it. Look forward to it. And I think the first one's up is going to be me, right? No, that'll be Kate and police brutality. Kate? Yes. It's on no. you, baby. <laughs> so she's going to knock it out. Police brutality is uh, the first topic up, man. So please come join us specifically what's going on right now. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be really tough, really great. And we're going to provide those solutions at the end because this is the Solution University. Um, Peace and blessings, everybody. And we catch y'all next time.